Hey guys, today I'm doing a video on turnout tips. Turnout is one of the things that I get asked about most on Instagram and lots of you want to know um, how I improved my turnout. And obviously it's something that lots of us adult ballet dancers have to kind of contend with because um, it's not the same trying to get turnout when you're already fully grown adult um, to when you're a kid. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to kind of break it down into the three areas and then I'm going to just talk about some different tips and ways that we can improve our turnout. So before I get into that, I just wanted to say that um, when I went back to ballet at 26 years old, um, if you guys haven't seen my dance story, I will link it. Um, in the description so you can go and see like my whole story but basically I danced a lot um, but like contemporary salsa and those kind of things so I hadn't been doing anything that was in a turned out position i.e. ballet so when I came back to ballet when I was 26 um, I had a lot a lot of work to do and it was a real struggle it was really difficult and um, I remember in like one of the first classes just looking at the girls warming up at the bar and you know how you do the stretch where you put your leg up on the bar um, and you just saw that all their rotation so like you know their foot wasn't like this it was like this and I was just like how on earth am I ever going to be able to do that? I just want to first say that it is definitely possible to improve your turnout as an adult. So let's get into the three things that I think constitute having good turnout. Okay, so the three parts to turnout, in my opinion, this is the way that I see it personally, is you have your physiology, you have your flexibility, and you have your strength. Now, of those three things, there are really only two that we can work on. Um, or that are really advisable for you to be trying to change as an adult. And obviously those are flexibility and strength. But let me just talk a little bit about physiology to begin with. So, for anyone who was lucky enough to grow up dancing ballet, as you are growing, if you are dancing ballet, that is going to affect the way that your joints and your bones um, grow. For me, for example, I stopped dancing ballet when I was nine and then obviously I didn't go back to dancing ballet until I was an adult. So I missed out on all of those most important years when your body is really growing, especially your teenage years because that's obviously the part that you're turning into an adult, which is the body that you're going to be left with for the rest of your life. So turnout is something that I struggle with because of that and um, we will all, adult ballet dancers who haven't grown up dancing ballet unless you're just very very lucky and for some reason your body has formed um, in a kind of turned out position then we're all going to struggle with our physiology in terms of turnout. So basically what the physiology part of turnout is, is, uh, is going to be our limitation. So what I'm saying is we shouldn't push it past that. We shouldn't be trying to change our physiology, we shouldn't be putting strain and stress on the joint. I'm speaking specifically now about the hip joints. Um, we shouldn't be trying to overstretch the ligaments and tendons in our hip joints. Um, so that is the most important thing and the first thing that I want to say. And the reason that I say that, some people will say that you can and tendons and ligaments, obviously they're not bones so they can be changed a little bit. Um, but what, from my personal experience, if you guys didn't know, basically I danced ballet for like a year and I danced every single day and I auditioned to get into the Conservatoire in Madrid and I got in. And during that year in the Conservatoire, obviously it's not adult ballet classes or whatever that's kind of like do it at your, with your body movement range. It was like, you must close your fifth position. You must have a 180 degree turnout in first position. So basically I was forced to, I forced my turnout for a whole year when I was at the Conservatoire and um, I ended up with a really bad hip injury in my left hip and um, there basically was nothing that I could do about it. Like I went to the, I went and got scans, I went and um, saw like various different medical professionals and uh, basically they just said like you need to stop dancing ballet and obviously I was like absolutely distraught and I was like I don't want to stop dancing ballet, this can't be the only way. So then anyway, I left the conservatoire for various different reasons, the injury being like part of that reason, but there were more things as well. And um, I continued to dance 
ballet in adult ballet classes and I danced for another whole year um, obviously I wasn't forcing my turn out then so that was good but I didn't ever give my hip a break so it took until the next summer when I had a summer off um, I was not dancing very much at all because I was traveling a lot and then my hip properly healed itself um, and actually I had problems with both hips but it was mainly my left hip and um, then I could kind of start again from the beginning and I learned how not to push my um, joints but how to work my turnout with what I have with what my physical body will allow me to do and um, concentrate more on the strength and the flexibility obviously I was doing those things as well at the conservatoire and in the end I did manage to like close my fifth position which is just quite crazy because I was 26 um, so yeah basically I just want to say before we start please be very conscious of the difference between straining your joints um, your tendons and your ligaments and stretching your muscles and using the correct muscles to hold the turnout position so now that we've got that part of the way, let's move on to talking about flexibility. The most important flexibility for turnout is basically a la seconde. So getting your middle split is going to help your turnout no end. Um, I'm really lucky that I have my middle splits. I've always been very good at stretching in that direction and obviously I work really hard. I always stretch, I always do my middle splits. If you'd like to improve that, I have a special video um, on how to get your middle splits. So I will also link that in the description. Um, but that is something that will really, really help. But apart from that, it's also important to be stretching in the butterfly position and to actually lengthen and shorten the butterfly position because it's going to use different muscles. So obviously usually when we do the butterfly position we're going to have our legs more or less in this position but it's also very important to be stretching all the way like this. This is your turnout so it's really important to be loosening all the muscles around here and being able to keep that turnout position as you elongate through your legs. So again I would stay here for like as long as you can really. You know, you can be watching something on your iPad, you can be checking your phone, reading a book, whatever you want. But the longer you can stay in these positions and then obviously elongate and try and keep your knees down, 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 down. Other things you can do are different stretches at the bar. And again, it's about lowering the knee and getting the heel up. Start on the lower bar or on the higher bar, whichever is more comfortable. But the idea of this to really stretch your turn up muscles is to lower your hip and to get your foot this way because a lot of us have the tendency to stretch here we're stretching our hamstring that's great but actually if you don't stretch these muscles on this side you're never going to get good turnout so that is really really important as well even if it's at this level make sure that you're rotating and then feel that stretch there because these are the muscles that are going to let you turn out it's not your hamstring this part of your hamstring that's great for other dance styles but in ballet we need to be lengthening this part another good one to do is in attitude um, so keeping your ankle on the bar and just let letting that um, knee drop and something that I noticed when I first started ballet was I mean I could have got probably about there and when I did this, I had this weird like twisting sensation in my muscles because they weren't used to being in that position. And slowly, slowly, slowly from doing this a lot and making it shorter, making it longer, going forward, um, I finally managed to get my muscles to kind of change their shape. And then of course, we can also do stretching like this and making sure that we're turned out. Basically, every time you stretch, just making sure that you're turned out, that's gonna help you <laughs> stretch your turnout muscles. So that is really important because your muscles can always change. That is not something that is set um, like your bones are. So my muscles were all like in parallel, basically. And I remember at the beginning, like that feeling of turning out, and especially if you know this feeling when you're doing like a développé devant, and you get that, that you're keeping your knee up and as you extend you get this weird like like inside your muscle um, <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has experienced that if you have let me know because I think that I might just be weird like that but the more I've danced ballet and the more I've worked on 
lengthening all of the different muscles in my body and working with correct hair now all the time um, then it's just gotten so 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 much easier and so much better and now that doesn't really happen if it happens it's only a little bit <laughs> okay so now comes the part about strength and this goes absolutely hand in hand with technique because obviously in ballet we want to be strengthening the correct muscles for the ballet technique because we have a lot of muscles in our body um, which are predominant muscles, they're very strong muscles but that we don't actually want to be using for ballet because they're muscles that would, for example, help us with running in parallel position. Uh, those are not the muscles that are going to help us in ballet. So to make sure that you're doing everything with the correct technique and not be trying to take shortcuts or kind of get your legs higher or I guess like some people would say like cheat um, because in the end you're not going to be working the correct muscles and therefore you're never going to get good at holding your turnout um, because your turnout muscles are very different to the other muscles in your body that you might be using. So I'm going to show you a few things that you can be thinking about and a few little kind of tests uh, to see if you're using the right muscles and the kind of muscles that you want to be strengthening to improve your turnout. So something that's really important for finding where you should be turning out to is not to wiggle your feet into a first position or a fifth position but actually to go onto releve and use your muscles and then lower wherever you are. So we don't want to be doing this we definitely don't want to be lifting our toes off the floor and the other thing we don't want to be doing is rolling forward in our arches we want to keep the arches lifted that's really important and if sometimes you can be there like I feel very comfortable here but as soon as I do that I feel the pull on my knee and so that's where I know that that's not the right turnout position for me so now to improve your turnout another thing that's really going to help is making sure that our spine is elongated. Now something that I did in the conservatoire is almost push it too far forward to try and get a better turnout, especially with my tondus, um, but it's not healthy and it's not productive. So just think about elongating. It doesn't have to be pushing forward, it just needs to be a line. Okay, so some things which I find really helpful for testing your strength of your turnout is in with a pied position because actually when we come to passe or retire uh, we're using different muscles but this these muscles here are going to be and here are going to be really useful for everything that we do at 45 degrees which is a lot of things if you think about it all the smaller steps all of the beginning at the bar everything is at 45 degrees so a really good way i think to test your turnout for going to come up coup de pied and we're going to try and maintain obviously the heels forward our supporting leg is also turned out and we're going to just try and maintain that and you'll feel your turnout muscles starting to really engage and that sensation is what we want to try and have basically throughout the whole ballet class and I know it's much easier said than done but that is the idea if you want even more of a challenge then it's really good to try this on releve so again the same thing let me do it to the front this time. So I'm up, trying to keep my supporting leg turned out. This knee is pushing back, I'm turning out from the hip. And I'm going to try and hold the turn out. And you can see, as soon as I let go of the bar, that knee starts to come forward. That means that I'm still lacking a bit of strength to be able to hold that turn out position. Because you see that it's not my physiology that's stopping me. It's actually the strength of my turn out muscles. <laughs> so that's a really good... Um, way to check if you're using your muscles properly and to see as well your limitations and it's another reason that some of us find turnout kind of disappears when we move into the center and that's because when we've got the bar we don't need to use as I mean we should but we don't actually sometimes use as much of our strength as we should and then when you go into the center and you don't have the bar that's when things start to turn in a little bit so that's lack of strength and that's something that we can all improve. Just to give an example as well of strength in a rond de jambe, for example. I mean, you guys know it's all about technique. And the technique of a rond de jambe on there should be that here, I'm rotating. You know it's all about rotation, but it's feeling those muscles. And as I come round, 
I'm trying to keep my heel forward for the longest time possible until I have to start rotating to bring it round to the back. So it's just constantly thinking about that as well and that's how you're going to build up the strength because there are no specific machines in the gym that you can just go and get stronger at turnout. It comes from doing class with proper technique and constantly thinking about turning out. The other thing I just want to explain is about the plie and the grand plie because I put up one of my plie exercises on, on Instagram and I had just so, so many people telling me how bad my turnout was and that I wasn't um, like trying to turn out and that it was really bad and really dangerous and other things. So I just want to explain, I mean, those people were people who had danced ballet from like a young age and so they have, their physiology allows them to turn out, but I just want to explain for adult ballet dancers, most of us anyway, um, just where our limitations are and how you can work around it. So in terms of the plie, I just wanted to really explain this. So if I'm in, I think it was mainly when I was in first position, so if I'm in first position, you can see that as I do my plie, you see my knees are not at 180 degrees. I wish they were, but this is my bone that's stopping my femur. My pelvis is stopping my femur from rotating anymore. It is physically impossible for me to push my knees back anymore. But as soon as we get down a little bit further, I can, and that is because the joint has opened up, and so I don't have my pelvis bone then stopping my femur from moving, and then it becomes just a question of flexibility. So theoretically, here, most of us will be able to get pretty close to 180 if we've got the flexibility here, which is why I said that the middle splits are so, so, so important. But again, there's no more that I can do here. I've never been able to do more than this. Obviously, I actually used to only be able to do maybe this because I didn't have the strength. But now that I've got the strength, I can go further. And then as I release more, I can bring my knees back further. I'm constantly using the muscles as far as I can, but that is the physiological restraints of my body. So as I was saying before, it's really important not to be rolling forward. We need to keep our arches lifted. So that, what I mean by arches is this part of your foot needs to be off the floor. And the other thing is that obviously we want the knee to be going over the toe. Now for me, that is different in different positions and it's different whether I'm doing a demi plie or a plie. So it's not as simple as people make it out to be. But obviously in general, we should always be aiming for the knee to go over the toes directly. So there's no good wiggling our feet like this if then when I bend, my knees are going forward. You know, I can put my feet in this perfect 180 degree position, but that is not how I dance because it's not good for my knees and as soon as I'm playing, you see, they're not over my toes. So that's why I don't dance with a, a perfect 180 degree first position because it's not safe for me to do that. So guys, I really hope you found this video helpful and that it makes sense. Um, like I said, this is just the way that I kind of break it down and I see it. Um, there are lots of different ways of thinking about turnout, but I really hope that it makes sense and that it's helpful for you. I wish you guys all the best of luck with your ballet classes and I will see you in my next video. Bye!